story that I want to talk about here, the new, uh, which this is new technology to keep an eye on. So there's a pretty amazing discovery uh, this week, which has to do with file compression. Um, there was a music file compressed that was compressed to 1,000 times smaller than a standard MP3 file. Researchers have, were able to to uh, digitally reproduce this this file to a thousand times smaller. Their example was a 20 second clarinet solo encoded into less than a single kilobyte. So this is just an idea of where compression could take us in the future. And this uh, study is funded by the National Science Foundation. So, so you know, we thought MP3s were were tight, and uh, now wait, see what happens with this uh, this sort of technology. I also heard about you know the one terabyte flash drives coming out, which or micro uh, SD drives coming out. So imagine a micro SD with one terabyte. So talking about compression take a micro SD with one terabyte now you can compress data at a thousand times what you're doing it today now what is that going to be 10 ter or you know or is that a, a thousand terabytes so we're talking about uh, some major growth in uh, in compression and what that's going to do um, so, so yeah uh, Mackie B uh, after the post show I like to always enjoy another beer or uh, a bottle of wine and do some cheers so so let's move on to uh, item number, uh, new technology story number two. So you can see, uh, yeah, it's lossless for sure. So compared to MP3, um, or is it considered lossy? So um, lossy or lossless? So it, I mean, it's compared to MP3, and MP3 is not a perfect. Uh, replication so they're comparing this to mp3 which is which is lossy I believe um, maybe uh, so it's lost list flack is lossy so this is lost list right so this would be compared to mp3 which would be a lossless uh, type compression I'm, I'm led to believe the, the news story didn't say, but being that they're comparing it to an MP3, um, I'm saying that it's lossless, which means that it's not a perfect replication. It's going to be like, you know, a MP3 at some of its best capability is around 90 plus percent of the, the overall quality. So you won't get CD quality sound, but it's definitely better than FM quality sound. So... Well, if if flack if flack is lossy, MP3 is lossless. So that I mean, to the best of my knowledge, so that's I mean, it's just amazing. You know, let me drive forward with this. It's just amazing that we have uh, you know a thousand times smaller compression than MP3. So number uh, number two here, um, what we have is these firefighting robots. So I've had this uh, topic in the past quite a bit. Uh, different robots that I like to uh, like to look at. So this firefighting robot says, you know, stop, drop, and roll. This autonomous firefighting robot gets its self-preservation instinct from its insect cousins. Only concept for now, but this off-road extinguishing apparatus is equipped with tanks of water, power, and power powdered fire extinguisher agents, guided by GPS intelligent feelers. And infrared sensors and heat sensors made of a fire resistant uh, fiber that can resist temperatures of 1850 degrees Fahrenheit could cost anywhere from $125,000 to $200,000, weighing in at 150 to 200 pounds. And uh, note with the embedded GPS, it could be used for tracking uh, if the device was to get stolen by some pranksters. So they're saying that this is just uh, this is just uh, uh, kind of a, a vision for now. It's not it's not being used yet. But in uh, Europe, they're saying they lose like uh, a couple million dollars a year due to fire damage in forest and that sort of thing. So by having these autonomous firefighting robots that could go in and and fight this fire just instantly rather than having to wait for firefighters to go out. It could save that country lots of money. 
in lost lumber and lost resources as well as potentially help the environment because once those uh once those trees are gone we don't have anything working on uh on uh producing oxygen for us so uh pretty cool uh technology we'll see what happens with that uh moving forward i'll keep an eye on it if i see any updates uh try to bring it up in the show so number three new technology to keep an eye on here is using your own cellular phone in flight so what's happening is in the uk right now they're going to start allowing travelers to use their own phones while in flight so the calls would be switched off during takeoff but once the plane reaches a given altitude they would be able to use their phones and the signals would be routed through a mobile base station on the plane which would then in turn dispatch the signals to through satellite and then back to the ground based networks so this would be pretty cool uh, I used to think back in the day when we were charged, you know, 10 bucks a minute to make phone calls on an airplane through those phones in the back of the seat. It was just a ripoff, um, you know, and the, the problem is, is when you, if you use a cell, you could use a cell phone flying across the country, but what happens is it crashes the network. The land-based antennas actually, it, rather than just one antenna responding to your seven trying to talk to your cell phone, you'd get like a thousand of them trying to talk to one cell phone, and it basically causes major havoc on the ground so it's not necessarily the interference stuff on the airplane but it's the havoc that it causes causes to the the cellular network on the ground so that's gonna be cool you know i guess once uh, the only bad thing about that is then you're flying across the country and you got all these people chatting on their cell phones and uh, disrupting uh, the environment so but uh, keep an eye out on that hopefully it'll come to the states here soon so number four i i also like to talk about environmental and environmentally uh, uh, minded topics. So this is a new hot water heater that could basically save save anyone uh, a good amount of money on their power bill. So um, the, the hot water heater, it says uh, this new hot water heater could kill 30 coal plants. Uh, hot water heaters are the most energy hungry single appliance in the home and they are responsible for about 17% of our residential energy use. But because of lack of consensus on how they should be regulated and resistance from the industry, their efficiency went completely unregulated. So GE has introduced this new tankless water heater that you can install in your house and it will do things like supply you unlimited hot water and it also uses 25% less energy per gallon of hot water uh, produced and the second generation of this which won't be available till 2009 they're calling it a hybrid electric heater which will uh, which will give you a 50 percent more efficient than the previous water heaters so this it'll heat your water up to 140 degrees and that sort of thing they say if everyone installs Every home that installs one of these will see their yearly power bills uh, drop 250 bucks a year. So if you guys want to see more information on, on this or a video on uh, this GE hot water heater, I'm actually seriously thinking about tracking one down because like, uh, like chat said, you know, ah, 45 minute showers, you know, I know my wife would just love that, you know, I mean, you don't have to worry about, okay, washing clothes. And then am I going to have enough hot water left to take a shower? Or I could do the dishes and wash clothes, but then I won't have enough hot water. So endless hot water supply, and plus you're being more efficient, and you're going to save yourself, you know, 250 bucks. Uh, I, I didn't find anything on the cost of this, you know, that, which that's a, a, a large component. You know, so how many years will it take for this uh, thing to pay for itself? So, but those are four new technologies to keep an eye on. The, the file compression... Uh, a thousand times smaller than the mp3 the firefighting robots uh using your own cell phone on planes and then the new hot water uh hot water on demand technology that ge is coming up with 